great people don't go through they grow through the difficulties that come on their path problems will come issues will come difficulties will come whoever you are doesn't matter we are on subject to our own individual worries and anxieties just the flavor is different What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I want to see explode out onto the world. Now, I started the Mentor Me series to try to hang around people who've done a lot more than us, and hopefully by spending a few extra minutes with them, some of their mindsets, their beliefs, their thought process seeps into us to help us become the best version of ourselves. So today, we're going to learn from one of the best, Gaur Gopal Das, and how to deal with problems and difficulties in life. Mentor Me, Gaur. All right, let's kick things off with rule number one. See challenges as opportunities. December 10th, 1914. There was a massive explosion in West Orange, New Jersey, United States of America. Ten buildings in a factory owned by the legendary inventor Thomas Edison were engulfed by flames. Six to eight fire departments rushed to the scene, but could not curb the chemical-fueled inferno. After having tried all that he could, as Thomas Edison calmly stood there, watching the fire destroy his entire life's hard work, his 24-year-old son Charles came over and stood next to him. In a childlike voice, Edison said to his son, Charlie, go and get your mother and her friends. They'll never be able to see a spectacular fire like this in their entire life. Astonished and shocked by his father's response, Charles asked Thomas Edison, our entire factory is being burnt down to ashes, Dad. Thomas Edison replied, in complete composure. Yes, our factory is being burnt down to ashes. But all the mistakes we have made so far in the factory have also been burnt down to ashes. We will start all over again tomorrow. That evening, Thomas Edison told a New York Times reporter, although I'm 67 years old, and I'm completely exhausted from running around and trying to control the fire. Tomorrow, I'll start all over again, afresh. And so he did. The next day was a fresh beginning for Thomas Edison and his son Charles in trying to rebuild what had been destroyed by the fire. Often, this is what life does unto us. Our dreams are shattered, our hopes broken, efforts baffled. Great people, they don't cry, they try to rebuild their dreams. Great people don't give up, live up to the challenges that life throws at them. Great people don't go through they grow through the difficulties that come on their path. They start all over again with great hope, with great determination, with great grit. And that is why they reach the highest peaks of success that most people only aspire for. That is why I say, no challenges, no success. No challenges, no success. Rule number two, smile. How many of you smile? Because you smile. I'll tell you a nice one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one guy, vernacular Maharashtrian student, he was in school. 
and teachers teaching English and the teachers teaching how to count numbers. He wrote numbers on the chalkboard and on the chalkboard after writing the uh, numbers he said Padu. So he says, this guy says, Shevanti, Tu Yeti, Yeti Nai, Nai Ta Nai. So the teacher said, what did I say? He wrote 70, 280, 89, 99. Shevanti, Tu Yeti, Yeti Nai, Nai Ta Nai. There was a Maharashtrian student uh, studying in a vernacular school. So the teacher was teaching numbers and he wrote on the board numbers and he said, read. He said, Shevanti, Yeti tu, Yeti nai, nai ta nai. There was a student in school, Maharashtrian teacher, and the teacher wrote numbers on the other day and the teacher was saying, read. So he said, Shevanti, Yeti tu, Yeti nai, nai ta nai. I'm telling you the same joke again, isn't it? Do you laugh on the same joke again? No. After a while, if I tell you, you'll say, Kuch to gar bada inka. <laughs> what is he saying? The same thing. He's gone in the repeat mode in a loop. What is he saying? <laughs> we don't laugh on the same joke again. Why do we cry on the same problem again? Huh? Huh? Usi joke pe, Usi joke pe, हम बार बार हंसते नहीं, उसी प्रॉब्लम पे रोते रहते हैं, नहीं? We keep crying on that same issue and that same problem again and again and again. Problems will come, issues will come, difficulties will come. Whoever you are, doesn't matter. चिता है ना चिता एक बार जलाती है, लेकिन चिंता है ना पल पल जलाती है. Kills our life, kills our present. We cannot experience fulfillment, ladies and gentlemen. God has a plan, an amazing plan. With all the challenges, with all the difficulties, with all the troubles that He sends our way, He has an incredible plan. None of us know what. None of us can see how. None of us can understand why. And therefore, at that point of time, all we do is cry. We can't understand why. If only we understood what the plan is, even while going through that crisis, we would probably smile. इसलिए हँसता हूँ मैं। पहले ही रो रहे हैं ज़िंदगी में। His Holy Sraddhanath Swami he says, "Do not take this material world so seriously, because it's always changing." Something that you take so seriously today is going to change tomorrow. Usko lekar baitho mat. Aso, smile. Rule number three, accept problems as a part of life. Everyone has their own individual pressures. As students, you have pressures to study. People who work go through pressures of deadlines and commitments at work. People who are married are worried about family pressures, their mortgages, their bills, and their mother-in-laws and father-in-laws and sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws and whatever else exists. You know, I was telling the story the other day. This is my favorite story. I just keep sharing it all the time. This is what really happened. You can't believe this, but this happened. I came to London Heathrow once, and at London Heathrow, I came to the immigration officer, and this immigration officer, elderly man, he said, "So what are you here for?" I said, to give talks. He said, then, are you living at your Watford Centre? I said, yeah. He said, how long will you stay here for? I said, about two weeks. Uh, he said, and can I ask you a personal question? I said, please, sir. He said, uh, are you married? I said, you are an Indian, aren't you? I'm a monk. He said, no, I was just cross-checking, just in case. <laughs> and then he said, can I ask you another one, please? I said, yes. He said, are you not missing anything in life? <laughs> he thought he caught me at the wrong foot. Are you not missing anything in life? I said, of course I am. He said, what? 
I said, problems. <laughs> you know what? He loved my answer. Believe me, hand on my heart. He stamped my passport. And as I'm walking out of the gate, he put his hand on my head, blessing me. He said, son, remain like this. <laughs> Son, remain like this. You will never have to go through any issues and your problems in life. God, uh, you know what? I mean, it's nice to laugh at. But as I walked through the gate, I turned to him and told him, Look, gentlemen, I must tell you something. Don't think that me as a monk is free from problems. Anyone who lives in this dog-eat-dog-live world, as they might say, or anyone who lives in this world full of rat race and pressures, whether it's you who are a student study or one of you corporates or business people who's working or married man or lady who's kind of dealing with family life or myself as a monk we are all subject to our own pressures we are all subject to our own stresses we are all subject to our own individual worries and anxieties just the flavor is different Rule number four, accept informed and transformed choices. We are put in many, many complicated situations. I want to offer all of you a very powerful tool, a very simple one. When you're talking about making a choice, weigh the consequences and just decide which of the two consequences you are okay to bear. Moral dilemmas are easy to solve because moral dilemmas are between good and bad. Ethical dilemmas are hard to solve because ethical dilemmas are between bad and bad or good and good. Remember this always. You will have to make one choice. You're not going to be spared by life. You will always have to make one choice. Choices means two things to remember. Informed choices and transformed choices. We should make informed choices. What is an informed choice? It's based on proper knowledge, based on proper deliberation, based on proper consideration, based on proper analysis, not haphazardly, whimsically made choices. And what is transformed choices? Choices based on our spiritual strength. So when we have a combination of informed and transformed, then we make a choice. Because informed, we know what to do, but we can't do it. And thus we definitely need to make transform choices and therefore they say an intelligent person will open your mind a handsome person will open your eyes but a gentleman will open your heart you know? a gentleman will open your heart and what to speak of an intelligent handsome Gentlemen, this is what I appeal to all of you. Become an intelligent, handsome gentleman. And rule number five, the last one before a very special bonus clip is invest in people. 2nd of February 2005, I was lying in a monastery in a rashtra on the wooden floor, exhausted, tired from the anxiety last night. And suddenly a fellow monk, one of my friends, came up to me and woke me up saying, he's leaving. He's leaving. I got up, gathering myself together, rushing to go to the room where my dear friend, Stoka Krishnadas, was leaving his body. Memories were flashing through my mind as I was rushing towards this room. He was a monk with me, had stayed together, we stayed together. At a certain point, he had decided to move on and get married. He went out, he'd taken a job in the hospital we run, the Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, as the librarian. He'd just gotten married, his wife was pregnant. And while the wife was pregnant, he was diagnosed with melanoma cancer. He decided that he wanted to leave the body in the monastery where he spent most of his time we had brought him to our monastery. As this memory flashed in my mind and I was rushing there, I remembered every day I went to sing God's names to him on the harmonium. My tearful eyes 
as I cry, seeing a dear friend struggling with melanoma cancer. Every single time I looked at him, my vision was blurred because it was someone so dear. Yet, this gentleman was amazing. He had a beaming face. All the excruciating pain that he went through hadn't affected his determined resolve. You look at his face. Look at that smile. No morphine was working on him. I realized this stuff works. His wife had given birth to a baby girl. They brought the baby girl to right next to him. It was the last time she would see him. It was the last time his wife would ever be with him. Ladies and gentlemen, as I walked to the room, my guru, Radhanath Swami, the author of the popular book, The Journey Home, was right next to him, giving him hope. I was astounded. Inside the little room, there were so many people. I was standing right next to him with my Guru Radhanath Swami. Outside were 450 members of our community, all together chanting the names of God. What I saw here was a man who didn't have a Lamborghini. What I saw here was support. What I saw here was people. People who were there to financially support him. People who were there to medically support him. People who were there to spiritually support him. People who were there to emotionally support him. I was amazed at the kind of support this man had given. You know what I'm saying? When you're born, people love you. And when you die, people love you. In between, you have to manage. <laughs> and this man had managed truly well. He had invested so much in relationships with his people that when he was in dire need, people had come to him. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is important for us to have support. Wealth doesn't just mean money. Wealth means money plus people and support. One gentleman said, do you know what's the difference between complete and finished? He said, if you find the right partner, you're complete. If you find the wrong partner, you're finished. <laughs> but if you find the right one catching you with the wrong one, you're completely finished. <laughs> we definitely need partners. We definitely need friends. We definitely need professional therapists. We definitely need people who can support us. And therefore I say if you want to talk truly how rich you are, drop a tear and see how many hands come forth to wipe that tear. That's how rich you actually are. Now I've got a very special bonus clip around choosing how you live your life that I think you're really going to enjoy, but I'd love to know what did you think about this video first? What was your impression? What did you learn from this? Don't just watch another video, but make a commitment to changing something in your life. What is that change you're going to make? Leave it in the comments down below. When you write it down, it's much more likely to stick. So put it down there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon, and enjoy the bonus clip. One time, I was flying from Moscow, Russia, to Kiev, Ukraine. I boarded the flight, and the stewardess came up to me and said, Welcome on board, sir. We guarantee takeoff. I asked her, landing, madam? She said to me, you're a monk, aren't you? Pray to the o Lord Almighty for a safe landing. We all are aware that when we take a flight, the takeoff is completely beyond us. We can do nothing about the takeoff. It's completely in the hands of the pilot. And when it comes to landing, even the landing is completely beyond our control. It's in the hands of the pilot. Many times when I fly and there is a very smooth landing where we don't even come to know that the plane has landed, people give an ovation, a loud round of applause. I have not been an exception either. Of course, the only thing is we don't give a standing ovation because the seat belt sign is still on. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the landing is also beyond our control. And what about the turbulence? The turbulence during the journey, during the flight, is also completely beyond us. 
the wind speed is beyond us when the plane passes through the clouds and the entire plane becomes wobbly it's not in our control what is in our control during the flight is our choice some people choose to just go to sleep yet others get completely drunk on alcohol some watch movies some keep munching something yet others make new friends talk to others and network yes what to do during that journey is in our control in the journey of life as well the take off which is our birth is completely beyond our control we didn't choose our parents we didn't choose which nation we were born in we didn't choose which city we were born in we didn't choose our socio economic class we were born in we didn't choose our looks we didn't choose the religion we were born in our take off of the journey of life was completely beyond us and the landing death even that will be completely beyond us i've heard many times people telling me that they would just love to die by getting a massive heart attack and dropping dead no trouble for them no hospitalization no tubes no needles no trouble caused to others in one shot go now no matter how much we might wish that it's just beyond us how we go and how the landing happens is completely beyond us and what about the turbulence the disturbances the problems during the journey of our life some of them are within our control which we can solve but many problems and issues and the turbulence caused is completely beyond our control because it's caused by situations which are beyond us it's caused by people who are beyond us yes ladies and gentlemen in this journey of life the take off the landing and the turbulence is not in our control what is in our control however is the choices we can make and therefore spirituality is about learning how to make those right choices when we learn to make those right choices we learn to live a transformed happy fulfilled life despite all the turbulence and problems that are going on around us it is said when we are beautiful it's god's gift to us when we live our life beautiful it is our gift to god therefore being a male is a matter of birth being a man is a matter of age being a gentleman is a matter of choice and as a corollary to that being a female is a matter of birth being a woman is a matter of age being a gentle woman is a matter of choice let us all take to spiritual wisdom learn to make the right choices which are within our control as our gift to god and thus live our lives as thorough and perfect ladies and gentlemen raise your standard apple at the core its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better not one drop of my self worth depends on your acceptance of me i don't ever give up i'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated if you want another amazing video highlighting excellence in the indian community check it out right there next to me i think you'll enjoy it continue to believe and i'll see you there